Welcome to the MP NFL Division 2 footy show for Game Face and studio guests for this week, Colin McVeigh from Hastings as the Blues find some form and Rowan Hoganberg having a great year for Somerville. Unfortunately for the Eagles, they just went down. A dramatic day talking as Somerville at Chelsea as Collingwood champ steals side bottom impresses in the President's Lunch as the Seagulls, thanks to five goals from the King, He's back, the King, Curtis Bywater, come from behind to sink Somerville as umpire Liam Marnie suffers a fit after an accidental collision late in the third quarter. Another win for Red Hill, but they're not happy about the Langwarren treatment of their star, Jonas Siverson, and they've got a massive injury list. And we take you through the run home. There's seven games to go, thanks to Swiss Locker. This is, of course, the MPNFL Division 2 footy show, and we welcome Colin McVeigh. Good to have you with us, Colin. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. And also Rowan Hoganberg from the Somerville Footy Club, having a great year, Somerville, but it was one that got away. Great to have you with us too, Rowan. Yeah, thank you. And good on you, Hulks. How are you, mate? You went with us last week. Where were you? I had a I week off, you. mate. I was a little bit busy. Oh, were you? Uh, yeah, lucky I'm back. That was rubbish last week, what you threw out. Was it? Yeah. It was you weren't happy with the show? Oh, no, it was the feedback I was getting from around the traps on the weekend. They but just, they missed you? Yeah, they said you were rubbish. So okay. I'll hopefully start. we'll get something All out right. of it this week. Uh, we'll talk later about where I need to improve. Beautiful. Now, Colin, it's about minus 150 degrees outside and you're wearing shorts. Do you always wear shorts? <laughs> uh, I wore pants to work this morning. Yes. Because it was like zero <laughs> degrees. But yeah, mostly wear shorts. Unless I'm uh, going out and put the jeans on with thongs. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot believe that. I uh, only wear shorts during summer when it's about 40 degrees, but anyway, I'm a little bit soft. Now, you've won seven, lost four, Hastings. Yep. Happy with the way the team's travelling? Uh, yeah, we're a little bit inconsistent at the moment. Just got to string four quarters together. Um, obviously, you boys know with the, the stats that came out, I think it was last week, um, just kicking efficiency in front of goals cost us a couple of games. And um, we've just got to tweak a few things, and hopefully we can get a few more wins coming in the last seven rounds. And how's Feb been? Yeah, he's been good. Uh, obviously, he's getting plenty of the ball. He's just uh, struggling to kick a bit straight, sort of how we're travelling at the moment. I think he kicked two goals seven on the weekend again. So he's played five games for us. I think he's kicked 11.33 or something. You have a reputation of being one of the best readers of the play. Yep. Why are you so good at that, you think? I think probably I played forward when I first started coming up in the seniors and, uh, you know, sort of take it from that and... You know, being able to read the play, being a forward, it sort of makes it a little bit easier going down the back line, I think. So uh, that's what I put it to. Are you concerned that you've struggled against the, the top sides a bit this year so far? Yeah, a little bit concerning. Um, but we understand that we're, we lost a lot of experience last year and we've had mm. five debutants this year. Mm. Um, so we understand we're going to be inconsistent. But um, hopefully the last seven rounds we can uh, pull it together and play four consistent quarters and kick, kick straight in front of goal. I saw that game against Red Hill up on the, on the uh, mountain up there. Yeah. Um, it seemed like there was a fair bit of a gap to make up. Yeah. Um, where do you reckon, obviously, you need to improve to get more competitive with Red Hill? Yeah. Well, straight up, you've got to play four consistent quarters. You can't, you can't just play two or three quarters. Um, skill execution, too. You know, if you turn the ball over against them, their two-way running is unbelievable. So, and also, too, we need to be two-way runners as well. So, as, you, as you've probably seen this year, any team that doesn't do that against them, high-scoring side, and, and yeah. they'll put you away early. They win a lot of ball around the contested yeah. area, too, and get yeah. it forward. And just their work ethic, too, yeah. it was just unbelievable. And they use it so well, don't they? Yeah. That's, that's been your strength. Rowan, congratulations on 100 games. So you. you must be delighted with that. Your team's having a really good year, but... That must be one that you're still thinking about that, that got yeah. away. I know the coach is. He was, yeah. he was really disappointed on Saturday night because you had that game in the bag for a large portion of it. And even when the rain came down, you were almost yeah. four goals in front before half time. No, it was pretty, it's pretty hard to swallow. The boys you know, put in a good effort. It was unfortunately came down to the last quarter against Chelsea. And then, yeah, we just probably didn't kick straight when we needed to. And they got on top of us. And we're really disappointed about it. But we're showing signs. We're a young side. So it's good that we can compete against sort of the better teams in the comp. A little bit of ill-discipline too, the Curtis Bywater goal after the, the first goal was kicked by Jesse Davies before it yeah. went back to the middle and then there was another one I think he got later on, 50 minute penalty, right on half time which reignited their yeah. uh, their performance. Yeah, that's um, something that we're trying to improve on. There was a few uh, undisciplined free kicks that gave them the goals in the end. They win by five points and that's what wins in the game. So it's little things that we can sort of get out of our game that could have um, yeah, helped us win, but very disappointing. You're having a cracking year, though, on a personal note. Um, 
done anything different through the pre-season or, or lead into this season? Um, nah, it was just probably the year off last year. Just yeah. kept me sort of, freshened me up a little bit and got me sort of um, a bit more keen to sort of um, get stuck in a lot more. So I haven't really changed anything. I've always loved playing footy, loved training. So yeah. haven't changed anything, but just enjoying the team and playing with the boys that we've got now. So Was that to, was it to go through the police force, was it? Or not? Yeah, just um, just through work commitments and stuff like that. I just yeah. decided um, just to focus on that for a season yeah. um, and then come back this year and then I'll be right to go. So the body's fresh? Yeah, it's still probably 11, 11 games in now. It's a bit sore, so, <laughs> but um, still feeling all right. How old are you now? Uh, 25. It gets worse, mate. It yeah. gets worse. What's yeah. the, oh, good on you, Hulks. Gee, <laughs> you've got a play who's had a year off. He's come back. And oh, you've mate, 25, got, he's a pup. Got stuck into it and said to him that uh, it just gets harder the oh. older he gets. What's it like being a policeman, Ron? Um, it's, enjoy, it's, it's interesting. Actually, oh, I work around the Hastings area, so... Well, you um, might have bumped into Cole a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, 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 I live in Sunny, I see him walking his dog every now and then, so... No, nah, it's interesting, yeah, you, do, you get to do a lot of different things. Um, it's quite, yeah, it's all over the shop, so I love it, it's good fun. Yeah. Now you've got a new president, does that mean a change in culture a bit? Um, yeah, a little bit. Obviously, every time a club gets a new president, there's always going to be some sorts of changes. Um, he's coming from sort of a junior background and everything, and um, yeah, he's, he's been great for the club. Um, loves the boys, loves the club, and he sort of does his side of thing. Lets the boys take care of footy, which is how I think every footy team likes to go about it. So, yeah. I'll Anyone who can keep the Gillis boys in check is doing a good job, I think. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> want to ask you about Ryan Gillis. I got a good look at him close up at three quarter time, and I didn't That's know. Happened. I knew I knew he had the the funny haircut. Yeah. But it, but I didn't realise that he had the tats that uh, actually yeah. covered his entire head. Oh. Does, does he have? A tat in every part of his body that you've seen so far, Rowan? Yeah, well, he's, um, as you say, you've seen, so he's a pretty ugly looking dude, so he tries, <laughs> to, he tries to get the tattoos to cover up as much of his face as possible, so uh, I think that's good for everybody, so. Yeah, like, they, give away, they give away three 50 metres in a row at morning some one day. He's, um, he fires up. Oh, I mean, he missed a couple of shots that were crucial for you. The thing about him, I don't like talking about him too much because <laughs> everyone likes to talk about him. We'll get to training and that's all he'll be saying. <laughs> gil, gil, gil. So I'm not the G-man. Yeah, pretty oh, much the G-man. So no. <laughs> I don't really want to say too much, but he, as much as stuff he gives away 50s or free free kicks, he does um, does as much for the team positively as well. So he kicks a lot of goals and he, um, he plays some good footy, so that's what we have him there for. So His brother's a polar opposite. He's such a good... Like, when he was growing up, he's yeah. such a good kid. He, he was quiet. I don't know what he's like now, but and uh, yeah, he's, he's still. Oh, yeah, Nathan's a ripper. Yeah, um, he is a cracker. Yeah, he's good. They're, they're both good in their own right. They just go about it a different way. So <laughs> good on him, I reckon. Now I had a good chat to Brad Canavan after the game on Saturday. Obviously, he was very disappointed, and I was sort of standing near him in the last quarter. And he wears his heart and his sleeve. He signed a two-year extension. Originally, he was just at the club for one year. Uh, how important is it to uh, have a bit of continuity with your coach for the next few years? Oh, I think it's awesome. Like, um, especially, he's been really good for the club this year. I know for me, personally, I've never had um, just a coach coaching me. I've always had playing coaches. So to have someone that can focus completely on coaching, it really, it's really helpful for the team. He really gets the young boys up and about, and even the senior boys. He's just very professional, very um, structured and organised, which is what the club needs. And I think... Um, in this day in local footy, you need, you need a coach that's going to be there for a few years and not maybe just one year because it helps build something and you can work on game plans and yeah, going forward. Yeah, I think it's really a really good thing. Well, because you came, Hulks, from the uh, Southern Football League and yeah. you got teams up into first division. They won premierships in second division and uh, he said he's had to change his style a bit because that was a, a real stoppage competition yeah. and this is more of a running competition but he said it's been really good for his coaching the challenges involved in that. He's, he's definitely been one of the coaches of the year because we mm. all had some that were looking like they were going to struggle toward the bottom of second division at the start of the year yes. until they come out and put a few performances on the um, on the board and then we all sort of take notice. So he's done a fantastic job. Well, when Paul Fermanis, what a good player he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, a, he's a star. He's, he is. Um, he's a star from where the league he came from. He's coming to this league and he's just he's just a beast. He um, mm. does everything. He can run, mark, kick goals, play for the movie. He's just he's a gun. Colin, Todd Elton coming back? Yeah, he's back after this week. He's just gone to Europe for a quick three-week vacation. <laughs> just a quick three-week <laughs> vacation. The flavor, and, uh, where do you go, London? I've got no idea, mate. No idea? No idea, but all I know is he's back after this week. <laughs> so we've missed him up uh, St. R. Ford. He uh, leads really well. Uh, big engine, and, uh, yeah, we definitely miss him. That's for sure. Because you've also had some injury concerns, haven't you? I remember the first game of the year when you had, I think, no one on the bench. Yeah, we had 16 players going in the last quarter. 
So we'll, yeah, we've lost a, a couple more for the rest of the year. We've lost um, Joel Williams. I yes. think you guys were calling him the five million or six million dollar man. Yeah, I, I, think he, um, I think the shoulder kept popping out, didn't it? Yeah, he played a couple of weeks ago and popped out again. So Jeez. he's uh, pulled the pin for the year because he might need surgery and mm. and yeah. So uh, we still got Terry Green out with it. He did his ankle up against Lang Warren. Mm. Um, so he, hopefully he's back this week or if not next. So, yeah, we're just going to try and stay healthy. I think well, Fev, Fev's away for the next few, isn't he? Fev's away this week, but yeah. I think he's going to play every home game for us. It's good, isn't it? So well, Might have to get Paddy Foy out of uh, Cottonwood. Might he's have back to. out running. He's probably fit yeah, he's, enough still, he's still, is still he? still trains with the 19s. He, uh, he bought bright uh, green fluoro boots. <laughs> so he's, he's running around in those with the 19s oh. at the moment. So he's you still wouldn't expect it from him. He's he, still get a kick. He's a black boot kind he of would, man. Now, be. you two guys go out there and play as hard as anyone and no doubt you're concentrating on the next contest and winning the footy, but who's the toughest away crowd that gets stuck into you all day? Not, not just you guys individually or personally, but the whole team. That you just think, gee, I've had enough of this. Uh, probably this year, I'd probably have to say Lange. Really? Lange, Lange were getting right into us at Lange Warren. Um, um, I'd say either Lange or Pearsdale. Pearsdale? Yeah, Pierce were pretty feral when we went down there. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's one of the great words, feral, they are, isn't it? They were feral. Just down there yeah. and I think you up. Lange, Lange were pretty much, I wouldn't say feral, but... Um, no, eight year old day. Yeah, they're, they're the same, but our crowd was sort of... It was it was actually good. They were sort of biting at each other, so that was actually entertaining for the players because you could hear it all, so yeah. it was good. Can, can I ask you too, Rowan, about the umpire going down just before three-quarter time? Yeah. yeah. How tough was that watching it? Um, it was pretty, yeah, you probably you feel for the umpire. Like he went down um, pretty hard, and I guess we didn't realise it was a fit until sort of a bit later on. So it was pretty worrying and hard to see. You, know, you, don't, want to, you don't want to see anyone like that. So um, I think the trainers that came out and helped that day and everyone involved did a really good job in helping the young fella. And I think he, um, someone mentioned before he's recovering pretty well and it's all good. good so. so I think Ryan was about to have a shot, wasn't he? He had to wait five to ten minutes to have uh, that shot. It was Paul Fermanis. Oh, Paul Fermanis, yeah, so right. Fit, so we're trying to get in his ear, tell him that. To, to slot it and yeah, maybe soften it out a little bit, but cool. Oh well. Yeah, do you, do you think that went against you a bit that that break in play? Um, hard to say really. Um, I think yeah, yes and no. I guess I, I, I wouldn't really know. I think um, either way it would have probably been the same result. So, and Red Hill the best team that you guys have played against oh, this year? Yeah, the best two way team. Yeah, they, just their two way running is unbelievable. They're, they're so disciplined. Uh, half their two should be playing ones and half their under 19 should be playing ones. So, and they all play the exact same way. So yeah. they lose injuries. they got blokes coming in from the twos or the 19s. So, yeah, yeah easily Red Hill. They're a very good team. They play. They've all got roles. They've got stars, but they don't play as individuals. They just all know exactly what they need to do. And, yeah, it's, it's good, to, good to play against them. They're a, good, they're a good team. And who do you think is the best player in the comp? Oh, you can't and go past Simpson, can you? Dan can. Dan I'm, probably had him at seven. No, I, think. I had him top. I had him top five, and oh. I reckon he's outstanding player, Siverson, but he's out for a week with a concussion. Oh, I think he'll be okay. He'll, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll talk he'll. about that very soon. What do you reckon? Mate? I actually reckon Paul Rogash from Hastings. Yeah, yeah he's, he's still going alright, isn't he? he yeah. um, I think he's a star. He's just, yeah. especially if he plays off the back line. I think he's quite dangerous. And played against him for a few years, and he's just always. Yeah, he's just. I, I think he's a gun. So where's his best position, Colin? Oh, he's actually oh. been playing middle in the last. Has three, four weeks, and sure. I reckon he racked up about 40, 45 touches on the weekend in the goal. So he's been dominating. And you can put him anywhere. Yeah. You can put him in half 40, he'll, he'll clunk marks, kick goals. Put him in the guts, he'll have 35, 40 touches. Put him back line, he'll take mm. 20 in set marks. So he's just a, uh, a, a, can, yeah. a solid leader, and he's, he's a fantastic for our club. I think in a, if you're in a top, like in a top level side and Hastings are going well, I reckon half-back flank every day of the week. Yeah. You can just have the yeah, luxury of having a lot there. of run and drive, yeah. Mm. You they just d- hope you're not playing a final if you make the finals yeah. on a Sunday because of his commitment to the Northern Junior Football League. Yeah, yeah it's a bit hard, but obviously mm. work, work comes first. And, you know, we, we knew that coming into this year that that would be the issue. But, you know, you, you don't think about it. You just go out there every week and just try and play a game. You won, won, a grand grand final, won a grand final against Franks and he took 23 marks Did or he? something one day. It was ridiculous. Yeah, we actually we watched it on Mad Monday. Oh, and he yeah. had, I think, 20, 22 intercept marks. Yeah, that was the most 22 ridiculous. 22 intercept marks. They didn't yes. have anyone and on they, him. He no just took him on the ball all day. 
and he it was ridiculous. I think he had ten in one quarter in the third quarter. He would have had twenty over twenty five touches before half time, Joke. or just behind the ball. He's and they didn't. Nice bloke, yeah, like, no. yeah, he is. He oh, he's a lovely bloke. If you get stuck into him, you just feel bad because he's just always got a smile and he just, <laughs> just yeah. Don't you hate that? Yeah, he's got his socks pulled up. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, he's just yeah. We can't. You hate that. Yeah, we, I remember we interviewed him earlier in the season after the Seaford game. There's a bit of tension between us and, and uh, obviously, Hastings over Brenda Favola, and he was happy to chat to us. He was fantastic, and uh, he's always been very good to us. Now, the Franks and RSL is good to us as well. They're one of our major sponsors. When was the last time you went down to the Franks and RSL? Well, a great supporter of local sport, Karingal YCW and uh, Frankston, uh, sponsored by Franks and RSL. Great food, great service, and a safe environment. Do yourself a favour, great Molly Meldrum phrase, and visit the Frankston RSL. Now, a dramatic day at Chelsea, as we said. Collingwood champ, still side bottom. He impressed at the President's lunch. I was told by my boss and by the Chelsea president, Michael Davis, not to ask a question, Hulks, about <laughs> Jaden Stevenson, but I don't tend to listen. Did you? And, uh, did we, you? Oh, we, I did, and he was oh. quite... He was more than happy to chat. And I just said to him, how is the young fellow? He said, what's the big issue of the week? We've got to talk about it, Dan. He said, I can flat bat it. Yeah. And he did, but he, he, ha he handled the question really well. And um, he's a really impressive fellow. What a good footballer he is. And um, it was absolutely sensational to have him there. And good country boy, had, mate. Yeah, he had the crowd transfixed. Now, Somerville looks set to win the game, but they were goalless in the last quarter. You had your chances, Rowan, didn't you? I mean, there was a, a shot by uh, Ryan Gillis. There were a couple of other opportunities. But uh, they just managed to close you down and you couldn't get a handle on Bywater, who returned to some best form. Well, I think, as he said, it says the King Curtis Bywater, but he, <laughs> I think a few of his goals... Who calls him the King? Yeah, I don't know. self-proclaimed. He's he self-proclaimed. He calls himself the King. I didn't know he said he, that. I didn't know who he was until I played against him on Saturday. And I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. But I think um, no, he played all right. But, um, he... Um, I think the umpires, I think he got a few free kicks, so out of the five, I think nine, two or three of them were actual free kicks, so... He does get into the umpires. <laughs> yeah, so he think, winches does like he? Yeah, he winches yeah. like a princess. <laughs> <laughs> I think a few of the Chelsea boys This do, is but, great. Um, they, when have you guys got Chelsea? And then I look forward uh, to that, because you, you might play in him, Carl. I think a couple of weeks, I think. Right, OK. Todd Gardner chopped up, Yeah, Todd, yeah. Todd Gardner in the second half, and I, I went into the huddle and heard Brad say at three-quarter time, one man has got them back into the game. Who's meant to be tagging him? Because he had been tagged out of it in the first half, and he, he just got off the leash in that third quarter, Todd, didn't he? Yeah, well, he you know, just dropped to his knees a few times, and I guess got a few free kicks. But <laughs> no, he's the old table side. Yeah, he? exactly. No, he's a good player. Um, I think yeah, whenever <laughs> someone's a good player, you're not going to keep him down for a whole game, so he's going to bob up at some point. He's a, he's a beautiful kick of the footy, and he kicked him some clutch goals. So yeah, Do you I think mean, the umpiring left a little bit to be desired, Rowan? Uh, a little bit, but I think... I'm not going to say too much about you, that. You cop it every week. Umpires make mistakes. Yeah. And you, you know, supporters think, you know, calls should be made, but, you know, that's just the way country yeah. footy goes. Isn't it? They even make mistakes in the AFL, so... There's a common theme at the moment with the Division 2, the love affair with uh, with Chelsea, because Cribby were in and Zach and uh, Devon were in and Paddy both said the same thing, that Chelsea were not their favourite club of all time. Yes. Yeah, it's starting yeah. to become a theme, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. yeah but I'll tell you what, they were in the rooms. They were delighted that they had a win, and we were lucky enough to catch up with uh, Curtis Bywater, who, of course, kicked five. Todd Gardner, as we said, superb also with two goals, but a, a terrific result for Chelsea, and they were relieved and also delighted after the game. Now, I've got Curtis Bywater with me. Do you call yourself the king, or do the boys give you the nickname the king? Uh, um, I more got it off my off-field performances, not, <laughs> not my... Uh, Football ability, but yeah, so that yeah. doesn't surprise me. Now the goal at half time, which some thought might have been a controversial free kick, it was down the ground. Did you feel that gave your team the self belief it needed? Because you weren't great in the first oh, half. No, were you? we were scrappy. They were, I think they were just first in the ball. We weren't attacking it. We weren't playing our football, and we knew it was going to be shit fight. But they just wanted it more. So I reckon it, it did turn that you know that goal. It sort of got us up and about, but. Yeah, that's all we need with change is just be first of the ball. We went. Yeah, it's a great win by Chelsea. As we mentioned, umpire Liam Marnie was involved in an accidental collision with a Somerville player. How was the, your Somerville teammate regarding that? Um, Rowan, did you have to get around him a little bit? Did that affect him for the rest of the game? Um, I don't think it affected his game. He obviously felt bad about what had happened. Um, he's a good bloke, so he, he obviously didn't mean um, for the collision to happen or anything like that. So, he, he, yeah. And it was a really nice touch by the crowd. They clapped him. It obviously held things up for a few minutes, but he's going to be okay. Now, 
Talking of incidents, uh, Red Hill have had a win, but a few injury concerns for Red Hill. Uh, Sean Holmes has got a foot. He'll be back against Karingal. A lot of these guys returning uh, Hulks. Sean Holmes has got a foot injury. Yeah, he's got a foot injury. <laughs> oh, Tom McEnroe's got a back, but a back uh, injury. Already, I think Smarty, so. thank, thank you. you. Uh, Jonas Siverson will discuss that in a second. Concussion, he'll be right for Karingal, as will, as will Harry Wynn-Pope with his um, ankle injury. Chris Irving, a back injury, should be right this week or next. Andrew Mock, an arm, gone for seven weeks. Michael Mock, a knee, he's likely to play, he'll have a test. And Trey Dawson, a wrist, out for seven weeks. But let's have a look at the footage of the Josh Biggs tackle on Jonas Sivertson. It's created a lot of controversy around the competition. Uh, a bit of theatre, because we'll go to this and they'll be looking at the expressions of your faces, three, two, and... Ooh. Well, gee, I don't know about that. I reckon that he should have been reported. Um, I'm not even sure there was a free kick given. But, uh, Colin, when a player is slammed on the ground and his head hits the ground, I would have thought that's a pretty serious uh, incident, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not that... It doesn't look that great. Um, obviously, if that was in the AFL, you know, he could be copping a couple of weeks. But also, we don't... It's on footage. So, uh, it didn't get called, but... Um, it's sort of up to the league what they want to do with it. I, I personally think if it was in the AFL, we'd be getting a couple. No doubt. Yeah. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, I think the same. It's sort of, when you look at the footage, it's two moves. It's not just one tackle driving into the ground. It's the extra sort of um, sling, I guess, in the end that's um, led Jonah to whack his head on the ground, which you don't really want to see. Um, and yeah. It's a, it's a double whammy, Hulks, because I, I've spoken to the club a couple of times this week and they're, they're furious about it and they uh, reported it to the league and the legal investigator, but he was close to getting a game for Footscray. He's been close for a little while, but he's actually named as an emergency for their VFL team. So he's very close. It puts him back. It means he misses a week. He'll obviously be right for the Karingal game, as I mentioned, huge game for the club. But then he sort of has to start the process again of trying to get an opportunity to play for Footscray. Yeah, it's an unfortunate incident because he's uh, such a good bloke and he's having such a good year. It was just unfortunate that he had his arms pinned and his head hit the deck, but... If you take a line from what the AFL are doing, like the boys said, he, he had no he had no avenue to protect himself. So whether or not the league are going to get serious and try and stamp that out in local football as well as league, we'll find out this week because I think it's uh, it might be looked at. Do you think it was worth a couple of weeks? If it was me on the panel, yeah, oh, I think it'd be worth a week. Yeah, 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 me too. No doubt about that. A lot of heat in the game, also between the benches. And the coaches. Uh, it was a passionate game. Oh, I mean, I know Josh pretty well. I know Black is pretty well. I couldn't was imagine Black, there, was he? Black is ever getting too angry. He wasn't there, but yeah. um, I don't know how he would have handled it. But uh, we know Jamie fires up a bit for Red Hill. But I love it. It's uh, great. The other interesting aspect was the crowd behaviour concerns. There were swearing and threats, and apparently Biggs yeah. he had to be escorted yeah. to his car at the end of the game. You don't want that, do you? No, look, you don't. You love that theatre in it that you get the crowd involved and they're yelling and carrying on when it gets to swearing and people were actually wanting to harm other people that uh, are participating in the game, then you've stepped over the boundary. But, yeah, but I mean, that all that heat and all that um, frostiness between teams, that's what it's all about. It's great. It is. But well, you just can't step over that line. I, I thought Langwon were pretty good. Yeah. I mean, they got within 30 points. They only kicked three goals, but they held Red Hill to eight goals in pretty tough conditions. Yeah. Yeah, no, look, it was a great game, and hopefully the final series like that, but supporters got to know they can't step over the line no. and start to swear and, and threaten players and things like that. That's where it gets... And I'm sure that Biggs, I mean, he, he tackled, it was a bit too severe, it was a bit too fierce, but I'm sure he didn't mean for Jonas Siverson to hit his head on the ground. Oh, and the game's been cleaned up a lot. Like, mm. seven, eight years ago, we are probably talking about blokes punching blokes beyond play mm. and headbutting and stomping on them, and now we're, the worst thing we've got is a tackle that you've force the guy's head into the ground. So the game's been cleaned up. But, so. but having said that, I still believe he deserves a suspension. Again, that's just my opinion. That's not necessarily the opinion of the organisation, but that's my opinion. But anyway, we'll see how it plays out. Now, Hamish McLaughlin, who's a lovely fellow, he, he likes um, the light side of television. Uh, doesn't really have an opinion that often, Hamish, but he was in the crowd and he spoke to Paul Wilson of Gaines. Well, look, down here at Red Hill Football Club tonight, and look who we popped into, Hamish Glock. What are you doing here, Hamish? Oh, well, you're supporting the local club. Um, the president asked me down for lunch and uh, had, a, had a bloody good day, actually. Good day, and you support Red Hill a fair bit? Yeah, well, I'm now officially a uh, card carrying member of the Red Hill fan club, so we've had a win. We go, what are we going? We're doing 10 and 1. 10 and 1. 10 and 1. Posted today. In Was the there slot. Oh, yeah. A couple of good players short, but still had a win, so it's good. Okay, that's good. And, uh, um, so you, you get down a fair bit local footy? Saturday's off, so... Um, That's good. 
kids a Saturdays and I've convinced them to start uh, playing a bit of netball here at Red Hill, which gets me some time in front of the footy. So it's Do you good. brownie points? Well, if I take them to the netball and the footy, wife's happy. It's good. That's the old saying, mate, isn't it? Exactly. Happy life. life happy life. Happy life. Well, mate, it's good to see you down here, watching the local footy down here. Uh, we do a little things to get your game face on. Look at the camera and say, get your game face on. Time to get your game face on. Now, Hulks, yes. Rowan and Colin, this is a serious question. Who do you bank with? Oh, I bank with Bendigo, mate. Yeah, so do I. I've changed to Bendigo. What, do you, what about you, Rowan? Oh, I'm ING from the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rowan, you didn't get involved in it. Colin, what about you, mate? Yeah, Bendigo Bank. Ah, uh, good on you, mate. <laughs> Go on, Rowan, well, you're a ripper. Bendigo yeah, Bank uh, donate. You're a very funny man, Rowan Hoganberg. <laughs> Bendigo Bank donate 20% of all profits back to local community. Gameface just changed all their banking over to Bendigo Bank. And if you'd like to show your appreciation for all the great work that Bendigo Bank do for the local community, especially in sport, change your banking over to them right now. We've got some fascinating games coming up in the lead-up to the finals. We've got four teams fighting for three spots at the moment inside the top five. We know that Hastings, uh, sorry, we know that Coringle's going to be there. We know that Red Hill's going to be there. Uh, we think Chelsea will probably be there. They're, they're looking pretty good, having that narrow win on the weekend. So there's two spots up for grabs, four teams looking for a spot. And the work experience boy who's been putting together our teams of the week as well, he's done a good job here, I reckon, because he's, uh, he's looked at Hastings' draw. He's given them three wins, Hulks, over Devon Meadows, Tyab and Rye, a loss to Red Hill and a loss to Chelsea. And now if they win those three games, they'll finish on 40. But if they win the two 50-50s in the second column, as you can see, against Seaford and Somerville, and they are 50-50, they'll finish on 48. What do you reckon about that? Yeah, it looks OK. Those 50-50 games are going to be huge for the back end of the year for all those teams. So they're all going to have a crack at each other, and whoever wins those is going to deserve their spot in the, in the five, mate. It's pretty good, Colin, to play Chelsea, Seaford and Somerville. It'll give you a real idea if, if you deserve to be in the finals, and they're a bit like... Finals preludes in a lot of ways, aren't they? Yeah, exactly right. Um, obviously, all, all last seven games are pretty important. But, yeah, those last three games against Chelsea, Seaford and Somerville, um, that's going to see if we deserve to be in there or not. And Summy, they've, they've got massive next three weeks. Oh, the next three. Massive. That's why the Chelsea loss might prove costly. Oh. They're on six and five at the moment. They've got Karingle. And the work experience boy has said that uh, they'll lose that, or work experience man. I'm not sure whether he's a boy or a man. But uh, then they've got Lang Warren, and then they've got Seaford, 50-50. And then after that, Tyab, Pearsdale and Crib Point, and 50-50 for Hastings. So if they win the three games, 36. If they win the three that are 50-50, they finish on 48. It all could come down to the match of the day. Rowan against Collins Hastings team and uh, yeah. you've been playing some good footy it's just a matter of putting it together for four quarters yeah that's the thing we're probably similar to Hastings you know we play good some weeks good some bad some weeks so it will come down to that last game and Kringle Lang and Seaford I think it, all three of those games are winnable games so if we can jag a couple there um, we'll make it pretty interesting do you reckon they can win two of those next three I was just about to ask have you beaten any of those sides through there Langy, Seaford, Hastings um, well we beat Langy and we yep. lost to Seaford by just a point yep. um, so as I said Kringle's probably could be the tricky one but I think we're more than capable of getting yeah. on top of them so I think yeah, it's definitely a winnable game have you yep. got, have you got um, Kringle at home or at Kringle no we're at Kringle so yep. that one um, yeah I've, I haven't played there before so that could, yeah, I don't know the difference there but we'll see what happens should be an interesting day. Now, Pierce, uh, now Seaford have got Pearsdale, Coringle, Somerville, Lange, Crib Point, Hastings and Rye. They've got a reasonably good draw. Uh, our work experience friend, we're calling our friend, says three definite wins, three 50-50s. So if they have the three wins, they're 40, as you can see on the screen. With the 50-50s, if they win those, 52. The only loss penciled in is to Coringle. What do you reckon, Hobbs? Yeah, Seaford are sort of thereabouts, aren't they? It's, Have been all year, haven't they? Yeah, they, they don't really put their foot down and say, yeah, we're here, we're a real contender in second division. They haven't done that yet. So they've gone against Kringle, got wiped, and same as Red Hill. So it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks. You guys beat them in a ripper early in the year, didn't you? It was a really good game yeah, of footy. Yeah, it was a really good game of footy. Well, I think we're eight points down going into the last, and uh, we end up sneaking, sneaking by and by six points, I think. So yeah. that was a ripper game. Yep. And Lange, uh, they'd be disappointed they lost last week, but they had won five in a row before that. And, uh, well, our work experience colleague has only got two wins for them, definite. 
against Tyab this week and Piersdale in the second last game and uh, a loss to Red Hill in the last game and 50-50s against Somerville, Chelsea, Seaford and Coringal. Basically teams that they have to beat if they are to finish inside the top five. They got their work cut out from them, haven't they? They, they have. have. Massive, massive uh, month coming up. So yeah, They're getting a few good players back, which will, which will help their cause. Again, all this just points to the fact that if you're going to win games at the back end, you deserve to be there. Correct. And yep. They did it last year. So we've got a magnificent run into the finals. And Chelsea are there at the moment and going all right. I'm still not 100% convinced about Chelsea, but we'll, we'll see how they go. Let's check the goal kicking. Uh, Mark Holtz on 53. Of course, they didn't play last week. Karingal. Uh, Jonathan Ross continues to kick goals. The man with the guns. Two to go to 44. And thanks to everyone, too, for all their uh, insults towards me about how ugly I am. And even though my arms are stronger than John Ross's arms after we had the flex off last week. Aaron Walton kicked a couple to go to 39. Uh, my ex-wife even said to me, you are too skinny. First time she said anything about me, uh, which means she might care about me in recent times. Anyway, we'll move Where on. Where is this show going? Ryan Miller's kicked a couple. <laughs> he said it didn't go anywhere last week. I'm trying for it to go in a more uh, comedic uh, uh, yeah. fashion this week. We the boys might that. agree. <laughs> Harry Larwell, like one to go to 31. Why are you doing that? Michael Theo Doriatis uh, is going OK as well. And Curtis Bywater, five to move to 24, having his best game of the season. Now, boys, we can get you out of here in a second, Colin and Ryan. I'm sure you've had enough of me. Big game, Karingal and Somerville. Who wins, Holtz? Oh, Somerville for sure. Oh, I think, I think Somerville are a chance. Thanks, Holtz. I think they're a massive chance. No, look, it's funny, isn't it? I do. <laughs> I think it's weird. Is Holtz playing? I love this man. Is Holtz going to play? He's got yeah, a dry sixty humour. Yep, they had a bite. Okay, oh, what? <laughs> I'm just checking my car out the front to make sure the wheels haven't been cleaned. Well, I'm, go- I'm going for some of it. There's a great man's next This could be the weight that Kringle might have an upset. So I'm 50 50 game, but. You know, if somebody turned up and played four quarters... He's trying to throw his weight around here, isn't he? That's great. I might, I might get the sack. I actually work for Dunning, so... <laughs> oh, there we go. That'll be a fascinating game, that. Now, Chelsea travelling to Crew Point, and Alistair Clarkson will be appearing at Crew Point in the next couple of weeks, and game face will be down there. So I can't wait to speak to the great man. There's been talk that he might be going to Carlton, so no. I'll be asking He's hard questions in the next mate. couple of weeks. I wonder what he'll say to me when I ask him that question. He'll probably look at me strangely. Most people do. You're going to have a shirt on? Oh, I'll have a shirt on. Thank yeah. God. Now, Not Chelsea yet. won't have James Brain. The skipper's out for the next couple. He's done a hammy, so he's out for the next couple. They'll still but, be right uh, against Gritty. They'll, they'll, they'll beat Crook Point. Be right. they, they need to win that. Lang Warren will beat Tyre, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Danger game. They can't drop it, or else oh. the next month turns into absolute rabble. Tyre yeah, challenged Kringle a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, they haven't lost Should have beaten point. them. Yeah. Tyre rushed behind by Mark Holt. All so right, if Tyre turn up... Turn up and play. It could be a good game, yeah. but you know, L- Langy when we played, they just ran over us in the last quarter. So you know, if they play four quarters, they they can beat anyone. They'll as take well. Langy on they'll that go in. They'll be. I reckon they'll be probably maybe potentially be a bit cocky, Langy and tired will be one of those teams that come out and jag them there. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll like see it. that happen. I like it's a big game that. Piersdale against Seaford. Seaford just need to win this, even though it's at Piersdale, they'll, they'll win comfortably. Yeah, they're a bit smelly yeah. at the moment. Piersdale says so Seaford will win this. Ooh. I don't like you saying that. No. Well, Rye against Devon Meadows, uh, 50 50 game? Uh, no, nah, Devon will win that. Yeah, I reckon Devon. Yeah. Anyone out for Rye? Uh, uh, Tyrone Head due back this week. Yeah. Will Cooper due back probably this Just week. you got your finger on the pulse there. Matt McIndoe, 200th game. Adam Kirkwood, thanks to Adam for coming back to me today on that. So, uh, big game for the club for Rye at home against Devon Meadows. I think they'll win that. And Hastings and Red Hill. Why would you beat Red Hill, Colin? I'm going to take Devon, uh, by the way. You can get my tip. Okay, I, I heard Devin. that. No, I think why. Well, we've got to play four quarters and and actually get the ball in forward and, and convert. So, and two way running. So hopefully we can put all that together and uh, put ourselves in the game. You might have got them at a good time. I know you said they've got a lot of depth in their reserves, which they're unbeaten oh, on they've, top they've, they've and under the 19s, best, but they've, the they've still got a lot of injuries. Yeah, well, they do, but the, the th- good thing about them is, you know, half their twos should be playing ones and half their 19s should be playing ones, and they all play the same way. So, you know, the plays that they lose, they gain back. So, um, yeah, we just got to be on our A game and, and play four quarters and convert in front of goal. Thank you, boys. Been a lot of fun. Oh. Uh, Rowan, you've got a real dry sense of humour. We'd love to have you again. And we'd love to have both of you. You too, Colin. Always good, always good to have you with us, even though you're wearing shorts on a very cold day. I won't say you're a strange man, because I'm the strangest of strange, strange men, as you've just seen today. But it's been wonderful having Rowan Hogenberg from the Somerville Footy Club and Colin McVeigh from the Hastings Footy Club. We wish you guys all the best for the rest of the season. Good on you, Hulks. 
Get your game face on. Get your game face on.